It's time for high school football. I'm David Swacker, welcoming you to the pit in Santa Mall for tonight's Rev Game of the Week between the 2-2 two two Santa Mall Gators and the 2-2 two two Helen Cox Cougars. Before we talk about tonight's homecoming game, we're going to send it over to Jeremy Terrio, who is standing by with Monica Arnold to tell us more about Rev, Reach a Kid, Teach a Kid, Grant Program. Thanks, Swack. So I am here down, I'm down here with Monica, and Monica, talk to us, what is Reach a Kid, Teach a Kid? Okay, so Reach a Kid, Teach a Kid is a grant program put on by Rev and Rev Business. And what we do is we give out 10 $500 grants to Ascension Parish school teachers, uh, K through 12th, and both public and private schools. So how long has this, uh, how to get started? Actually, it's been happening for about 20, over 20 years now, um, and it got started by our, our, co our old owners, uh, Miss Miss Beryl herself, who was a former educator, and she wanted to do something to give back to the teachers in the community. So over 20 years, $500 a year, I mean, it's, that's over $100,000, right? Yes, that's a lot of money. Over $100,000 we have given back to our t Ascension Parish teachers. So talk to us about, um, like, what's it like to read through these grants? Because our employees actually get to read through these grants once we receive them, right? Yes, we do. It's a wonderful experience. Um, just to find out what these teachers, how, how creative these teachers get in the classroom with our kids. I mean, the kids are the future, and Ascension Parish is a wonderful school program. It's just wonderful to see all the, you know, what they have to offer. Right, right. So any, uh, any programs that have stuck out, to, stuck out in your mind from the past? Yes, there's uh, rockets, poppets, <laughs> I mean rockets, rockets and, and poppets, okay. um, a lot of STEM programs, some escape rooms, you name it, they've probably come up with it. So anything that's, that, that kind of sticks out that wasn't STEM related? Actually, funny story is my son started kindergarten this year, and he actually I walked into the classroom, and the teacher actually recognized me because I had the honor of giving her one of these grants a couple years ago or a few years ago. She uh, won a grant for a book bindery program of which she takes, she makes books. The kindergartners make books, and by the end of the year, they give back. They give each one of the students a book, kind of like a memory type thing. Well, I took a book bindery class in college, and I hated it. Um, so it's, not, it's not the easiest thing to do. Um, so share, to, share with us a little bit about, you know, ETEL's commitment and now Rev's commitment, continuing commitment to education. Yes, we continue to give back. Uh, ETEL is Rev. Uh, same company, same community give back. Uh, we are in the schools always. We were filming this week in the schools for our t upcoming tailgate show. Um, we have donated coloring books. We're out here doing game of the week. You name it and we're, we're here. So she said, you know, new name, same local company, right? Same commitments. So Monica, we got a deadline coming up, right? So uh, where can teachers submit that application and uh, how, much, how much more time do they have? October 3rd, 8 p.m. is the deadline. So that means you have all weekend to come up with a creative idea for the classroom, submit it. It's a short application, easy breezy. Just make sure you, uh, you know, make make sure you know you let us know what you need, and uh, we'll hopefully award you with a with a grant. All right, so Your dreams come true. I mean, that's what a grant is, right? So uh, yeah, so letsrev.com slash r a k t a k. So rack tack. Um, the website is on the screen, and uh, that's all we got down here on the field. So stay tuned for the Rev Game of the Week. Thanks. Chris Specialty Foods has been making Cajun meat products for almost 30 years. We do all the prep work so people can have home cooked meals without spending all day in the kitchen. Everything is done ourselves. With three locations in Louisiana and a fourth in Texas, we needed all of them connected to the same system for point of sale and telephone. Rev Business set us up and it's been a game changer. They have everything as national companies but with real local service. Rev Business is authentic Louisiana, just like Chris's. Dr. Brian Hollis is Ascension Parish's orthodontist. Dr. Hollis has an excellent reputation for bringing state-of-the-art technology and the highest standard of patient care to Ascension. He attended LSU, LSU Dental School, and he completed a residency to become a board-certified specialist in orthodontics. An avid supporter in our community, Dr. Hollis is married to Celeste Pyron Hollis, and they have four children. Dr. Hollis, Ascension Parish's orthodontist. Grow up smiling with Hollis Orthodontics. Hi, 
Today we are live with the PPTV Network where one of the top athletes is about to make his important decision. We know his character and nothing will hold him back. I'm glad to have my family and friends here for this choice. It's more than my career. It will affect the rest of my life. I choose peak performance physical therapy. The decision is in. Why choose peak? The reputation and their regular success is unmatched. When it matters most, another patient chooses peak performance physical therapy. For your car. The Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center wants to buy your car. It's fast, easy, and fair. No matter what make, no matter what model, no matter what mileage, the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center wants it. And we'll pay you cash for it, even if you don't buy from us. It's the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center in Gonzales. Cash for your car at the Ross Downing Buick GMC Buying Center in Gonzales. Get to know SEC Heating and Cooling this year. Locally owned and operated by Stephen Conyers since 2013, SEC Heating and Cooling works with residential and commercial customers in Ascension, East Baton Rouge, Livingston, and surrounding parishes. SEC specializes in preventive maintenance, repair, and complete change-out and installation of energy-efficient central air systems. From professional sales and expert installation of central AC systems to repairs and ductless AC systems, we can handle all your needs. For total peace of mind, call SEC today. No one teaches you what to do immediately after an accident. Once everyone is safe, your first call should be to an attorney, not the insurance company. Don't let the insurance company take advantage of you at your time of need. Call the Title Law Firm. We'll walk you through what you need to do in real time. But you can take advantage of the Title Law Firm's 30 years of experience. Before you call your insurance, make a free, no obligation call to the Title Law Firm. Call 756-0007 when you're injured. You gotta call. You gotta call Title. Welcome, football fans, to the pit in Santa Maria, Louisiana, for our Rev Game of the Week. This is a Week 5 non-district game for both teams tonight, the Santa Maria Gators and the Helen Cox Cougars. You know, both teams come into this game with a 2-2 two and two record and trying to get on the win side, both teams headed into district play. Uh, so this is going to be the last non-district for most of your District team, some district, some districts are already in the district play, uh, and this is basically the last week of non-district play for the Santa Maria Gators and the Cougars. I'm David Swacker. I'm bringing you the action of the game tonight. You're going to have the Gators and the Cougars going to kick off in just a little bit. But before we go, want to look at the uh, uh, the coaches for both teams. And uh, for Helen Cox, you can see you got Emmanuel Powell. He's in his third year at the school. They're four and 14 on the year. Basically, this is the fourth time, and I'll show you that stat in just a second. Then, of course, you have David Oliver. I remember when he walked in my office 15 years ago looking for a job, and uh, Santa Ma is blessed. He's uh, one heck of a football coach in his 15th year. No, no other coach at Santa Ma has been in action more than 10 years, and David Oller's been 15 years, and you can see his record of 90 and 61. Uh, let's look at the uh, last week's action for both of these teams. Uh, Santa Maria was a hosting Opelousas, and uh, you saw Santa Maria was hosting Opelousas, Opelousas uh, went behind 14-0 and then all of a sudden came back with a big victory and won 28-21. to Helen Cox was playing John F. Kennedy and Helen Cox, a big exciting game, 25-24. to If you look at the uh, record of Santa Maria versus Helen Cox, uh, you will see that this uh, right here, Santa Maria has a three-game winning streak. Of course, uh, two of the years with the COVID 
were erased and uh, did not play. But you can see it's been a home game each and every year for the Santa Mar Gators, and they've been successful in year 2017, 2018. Then, of course, we skipped 19 and 20 in 2021. Big victory, 48 to 12. And as you see out there, that was played at Dutchtown High School. If you remember last year, uh, the East Ascension Field and the Santa Mar Field were not completed. Dutchtown Field was completed f first and early, and so uh, all three schools played at uh, Dutchtown High School, whether it be on a Thursday night or Friday night or Saturday night. Uh, Dutchtown was, uh, did an outstanding job supporting you know, uh, the fellow uh, the schools in the parish, and that was a... Uh, Santa Mar and East Ascension did not get on their fields until week 10. All right, let's look at the District 5-5A teams right here. So your District 5-5A, it uh, includes the three uh, Ascension Parish schools, which is Dutchtown, Santa Mar, and East Ascension, and then the three Livingston Parish schools, which is a completely different thing compared to what we've had in the past, where basically the Ascension Parish was in the Baton Rouge district, and now it's changed to where you have uh, uh, Live Oak, Walker, and Denham Springs. So you have a 16 district with those. And I, I, if you talk to any coach for any of the sports, here at Santa Mar High School, they are really excited because each and every sport is going to be outstanding, and uh, it's going to be great competition each and every week throughout the the school year. Uh, going on next, uh, we have homecoming at Santa Mar, and as you can see from what's going on on the field, very exciting time for a high school that's probably one of your biggest high schools in the state between Dutchtown, East Ascension, and uh, Santa Mar High School, probably as big as uh, in the top five, all, all three of these. And you can see the band all over the field, uh, a lot of people in the band. This is a big deal at the school all week long with a homecoming. And at halftime, we are going to crown the homecoming queen for 2022. As right now, we will look down on the field and watch the uh, pregame activities, and then we'll come back with our opening kickoff.
Oh, here we are back at the pit in Santa Maria, Louisiana, playing. The Gators are playing Helen Cox. And I'm going to give you some stats about the homecoming at Santa Maria High School. First of all, this is going to be the 45th homecoming game for Santa Maria High School. Remember, Santa Maria High School started in 1978. The Gators have a nice winning record of 37 and 7 all time in the homecoming games and have a seven game win, uh, winning streak in homecoming games and a nice 12 out of 13 uh, wins in the last 13 homecoming contests. Uh, as of late, uh, the homecoming queen will be announced at halftime of the football game, which is tonight. And the homecoming king was announced last night at a pep rally. They had a parade and a pep rally here at the stadium. And uh, Kyler Gilry, uh, number 48 on the football team, uh, was selected as the homecoming king. Uh, last year, th th this is a hard one to believe right here. Last year, the Gators defeated Dutchtown 21 to 14 in the first game that they played last year in the pit. So they had to wait basically the entire season. You know, they could have played a homecoming game earlier, but they wanted to try to play it at, a, at their home stadium, and they were able to do that week nine against uh, Dutchtown and beat them 21-14. And uh, that was the first official game played on the pit last year. Of course, last year, Jen Jenna Spillman, was your 2021 homecoming queen, and Jet Williams was the homecoming king last year. So sometime during our halftime activities, you'll see there's uh, Coach Oliver in, right there on the sidelines in his uh, 15th year, making him the longest tenured head coach in school history. Uh, he's one, way, one win away from uh, uh, Doug Morrow's record. And uh, I, I would have to ask Lyle, I don't know why he put Doug Morrow then. I've been third on that list, but no big deal, okay. Uh, the winningest coach with 91 wins, and Coach Oliver needs one more of those uh, uh, after he ties Coach Morrow. Um, his overall, uh, Coach Oliver's uh, overall record is 90 and 61. When, uh, after going into tonight's game against Helen Cox. 15 years at Santa Maria High School, doing a heck of a job. Very good coaching staff, very good school. As you can see, uh, the band's over in the corner of the end zone, if we could get a shot of that. Yeah, there's Miss Tomplay, the principal. There's the band in the corner of the end zone. You have the traditional uh, wearing uh, yellow tonight. Uh, the students in their little student section, the band's right there in the corner. They're usually uh, parallel to the uh, student body in the uh, visitor stands. And then you have a number of uh, pep squad cheerleaders that are going to uh, form a tunnel for the football team to run through. You got a minute 24 before we have this uh, opening kickoff. Here comes the Gators out of their locker room. Helen Cox is already on their sidelines. Gators, I think, uh, have had a, had a tough uh, road the last couple of weeks and Let's see if uh, Coach Oliver can get his troops going in the right direction, back headed into district play. Here come those Gators. They're always a tradition uh, at a lot of high schools where you have some student body uh, people that are waving flags, gator flags, American flags, a really nice tradition. And then, again, uh, you have Top Daily coming out with the uh, band. 
not the band, uh, the ROTC cadets for the playing of the national anthem, and we'll see who are. Captains for both teams tonight when they get out to the middle of the field. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for a moment of silence and remain standing for the presentation of the colors and the playing of our national anthem. Presentation of the flag by the ROTC of Santa Ma in the plain of the national anthem of the Santa Ma Band. Dear Heavenly Father, I would like to thank you and praise you for this day and this opportunity that all the players from both schools have to come together and play and compete under your name, Lord. I would like to thank you for the protection of the players as well as the members of the staff that you have been doing and doing and doing to protect each and every one of these players. I'd like to remember the same moment during this time that each player is given power from your name. We pray and play. Amen. Today's colors are being presented by the Santa Mar High School Naval Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps. Santa Mar Color Guard members are National Flag, Cadet Schilling, State Flag, Cadet Knott, Right Rifleman, Cadet Aver, and Left Rifleman, Cadet Swear. Beautiful night here, homecoming in the pit. Now well, here's the captains coming out for Santa Ma at 76, 99, and 44. Well, that's Mason Vaughn, 76, 99, Dylan Carpenter, and 44, Peyton Anderson for Gary Gray. Gary Ray, Gil Champagne, Chapman, I mean, and uh, Darnell Oquin for Captains tonight for the Gators, Helen Cox, number 76, Mason Vaughn, number 99, Dylan Carpenter, and number 44, Peyton Anderson.
All right. Um, and the Gators will kick off. Uh, the Gators will kick off. Helen uh, Gators going to be defending the scoreboard. And uh, Cardo, Tyler Cardo, will be kicking off for us. See if we can get who is uh, returning deep. Gators kicking off from the and right hash. Back deep for the Cougars. And number 14, Gil Chapman. O'Quinn is uh, returning the deep man. Back deep. <laughs> well, we got an early score. East Ascension ahead, 3 0. Right down that sideline, a nice kick by O'Quinn. Ball pops up, and the Gators uh, basically one or two yards gain by Helen Cox on that kickoff. Nice job by O'Quinn right there. It looked like it could possibly go out of bounds, but it just, you know, popped straight up in the air. And uh, Helen Cox uh, grabbed that ball and could not advance it any further. So the the Gators, uh, let's, uh, let's see what the Gators look like on defense, their starting lineup. And you can see it right there. Big front going across right there. Looks like they go to a five-man front, basically a five-three look. Now swing pass outside. Gators do a, jo a great job. Uh, a lot of uh, yardage there from the left hash all the way to the uh, down box and a gain of less than one yard on the play. Duplichan on the tackle right there. All right, here we go. Basically, no gain on the play, a second and 10. Gators do a good job of mashing everything up inside. So the first play, the Gators do an outstanding job on the outside. Second play, a give over the middle for a couple of yards. Jackson, do a good job on the stop. He creates a third and, and, seven. and seven situation. Got three down linemen. There was back, dropping back. Gonna scramble up the middle. Ronnell O'Quinn on the keeper for the Cougars. Going out of bounds on the 40. First down, Cougars. Four yard line. Nice scramble the there by the quarterback. Helen Cox here, first and 10 situation, 44 yard line. Dropping back to pass. Gonna scramble. Nice job on the outside. Malik Paul, outstanding job on Malik the outside Paul at his cornerback spot. Good pursuit on the inside by the, the Gators. Now we got a second and 12 situation. Uh, 
Uh, still uh, two receivers each side, and we got a little motion. Nice job in uh, on the inside handoff. Looks like Carpenter on the tackle coming in from his uh, defensive position. We have a kid injured on the play. Tonight's first quarter is being sponsored by Southern Custom Builders. They're licensed in both commercial and residential. Well, Carpenter did an outstanding no job getting off the block strong. right there, and That's the running back the just cut right to him. And basically, on a two, basically a one yard gain on the play, and create a third and ten situation. Southern Custom Builders. So uh, another part of our activity, we um, have Garrett is uh, up with me, a member of the basketball team, uh, up with me, uh, went to uh, middle school at Lake. He's helping me out with spotting. And uh, Jolie Hartman is going to be down on the sidelines getting an interview with Coach Oliver. Getting an interview with the homecoming court and the Queens and the Queen throughout the game. And also, uh, hopefully, enough time after the Queen is crowned at halftime that uh, Jolie can uh, be upstairs here and talk about. All the fun halftime, or all the fun homecoming activities this week at Santa Maria High School. And then I haven't said anything about this yet, but guess what happens next week? First district game. Guess who we're playing? East Ascension. So it's going to be an interesting couple of weeks for the Gators. Quarterback is scrambling, gets down the sidelines, and I believe oh, got enough right to, side. yes, indeed, oh, for dude. get the first down. Uh, Warren Mays, 6'4", 190-pound junior, just got on the outside containment right there and was able to get 12 yards on the pickup. So the ball is on the... 44-yard line. Now we have a little different formation. And we're going to run sweep to the outside. There's nowhere to go. Carpenter said, "You're not. it's not happening over here. You know, if you watch the replay right here, you watch him, he gets no, – nobody touched him, Carpenter says. Unbelievable. And uh, so he was able to get there. Causing the running back to cut back inside and the pursuit from the, uh, the linemen and the linebackers were right there for a one-yard loss. Great job right there by the defense. Two receivers to each side. Quarterback scr uh, scrambling outside. Can't get out around and gets out of bounds for a five-yard loss. From the sideline, Helen Cox, number 30, Smith. suffered an ankle injury. Linebacker uh, was able to get out there and force him to go out of bounds. So you have a so third to you, Coach and 15 Black. situation. Now, so far, you know, we, we have about four minutes gone in this game, and... What Helen Cox has done a good job. They've, they've created situations where these third and long situations, they've gotten first down, so let's see what happens right here. Here comes the Gators on a stunt. Great job on the tackle. Damon Smith, he says, I like the way my name sounds on that PA system, so I think I'll make two tackles in a row. But if you notice, they brought people from the outside and the quarterback had to cut up inside and that's Damon Smith scraping off from that linebacker position to make the play. Punting for the first time tonight. 
Yeah, we got a little action here. They're going to break out, out there to slots, positions. Not a real good punt. The Gators doing a very good job of getting out of the way because that ball will bounce in a lot of crazy uh, directions. And here they go from the 30-yard line, the Gator offense. Let's look at the Gator offense. And here we go right there. And and you can see uh, Gator offense right there. Josh Maurice has been your mainstay on uh, offense. Maurice. Chase Kelly's been uh, the ringleader. After Sheets uh, was injured early in the season, Chase Kelly's come in and done a pretty good job. Joshua Maurice is uh, right at 400 yards on the season. Well, dropping back to pass. Good job. Get, get. That's complete to number 84, Luke Rafferty. That's his third catch of the year. Nice throw there by Kelly on the outside. Leaves a third and three situation for the Gators. On the tackle for the Cougars. Gators going to a tight end wing situation. Well, we got a timeout call. Well, we got a hydration timeout. And on our first hydration break, Jolie, um, we get uh, pictures of the homecoming court during the hydration break. And here they are right there. You have uh, three groups of 15. Oh, nice color pictures right there. Very good job. Tyrese Smith, uh, Bab and Frederick Webb. And one more. Very good group. We'll show you that again a little bit later on. Here's a big play for, for the Gators. Joshua Maurice. Maurice, outstanding job. And I'm going to tell you, that's one of the strong suits for the Gators is the offensive line. Watch this right here. The, watch the, the left side on you visiting that you're looking at. Right up the middle. Josh does an outstanding job reading those blocks and picking up six or seven yards on the play for a first down. Joshua Maurice up the middle for the Gators. You see all kinds of schemes right here. We get to watch this play again. You can see the wing back pulling, and he just kicks out like a pulling guard, but now it's going to be a pulling wing back. And uh, Maurice, uh, he just all he uh, does is just read what's going on. Joshua Maurice off the right tackle for the Gators. And Seth Babin will do this all night long. Bryson Moore, Bryson Moore is a linebacker for Helen Cox with the tackle. And short for the Gators. He got a short yardage situation. Uh, now take that back. Very short yardage situation. Joshua Kicks to the outside, Maurice. Easily picks up uh, with a five-yard gain. So you'll see if this is working for Santa Mar, which it, it is, it's just been, you know, they haven't been stuck in a third and long situation. They've thrown one pass, very capable of throwing the ball. You 
You know, they look like they're in man-to-man -man situation here. Chase Kelly on the keeper, trying the left side for the Gators. A little outside power play there. Jeremiah Hall Jeremiah on the tackles. On Chase the Kelly the right there reads that defensive end. And, uh, you know, as you see, uh, Maurice has been getting the ball every play just about, and all of a sudden everybody jumps on him, and uh, Chase just pulls the ball and picks up a couple on the play. Chase Kelly's pass was incomplete. Intended for Cole Sims on the play. Cole Sims intended, uh, he's got 11 receptions on the year. Kelly's 45 of, let's just say, uh, well, 46 of 84 on the year. Chase Kelly's pass is complete. Good job by Chase with a little fake swing pass to uh, the running back, and it comes back in the other side to Luke Rafferty, and uh, outstanding job right there. Bring up fourth and near five for the Gators. Fourth and five. We'll see if they try to get him to jump, maybe. That's usually a common thing all the way up to the NFL. Nice pitch and catch right there by the Gators. Chase Kelly, what a throw, what a catch. Chase Kelly just lobbed that ball down there. Nice pitch right there. 30, 20, 33 yards, Easton Gyro. Gyro, boy, he just sucked that ball in like it was right there for him to score with and he came really close to the 10 yard line. Now here they come with a outside blitz. Kraft uh, with the run. Kind of a different running back than uh, Maurice, but a strong, maybe a little bit quicker, maybe not quite as strong, but he's very efficient. Getting some nice yardage, and all of a sudden now it looks like some heavy people coming in. A few of the receivers come out. Joshua Maurice. Maurice right in the backfield, and the referee raises those hands. Touchdown, Gators. Boy, nice job right there with the heavy package and handed the ball off to Maurice, and he was able to ease in that end zone. About a, uh, about a three or four yard gain right there, one yard deep in the end zone. Now watch what I hear, swinging gate situation. There's the pitch out there. Incomplete pass. Lane uh, Swanson was the uh, quarterback there, I believe. I think he probably has one or two options, maybe three options on that to where you are going to keep it, probably first of all, or uh, maybe have an option of one or two guys to throw to. Well, both teams move the ball the first time they get it. Pretty good job there right by uh, both of them. The Gators able to get the ball in the end zone. Very consistent drive. Antonio Oquin's back deep for the Cougars. deep. You got number 31. Cardo. Basically the same way, catches it on the run. Better job of fielding at that time, number four. Jeremiah Hall does a better job of not letting that ball hit the ground. 
and getting the ball up to the 36-yard line. Well, the Gator defense will come out doing a pretty good job of not letting them make too many big plays and able to stopping them once they kind of figure out, you know, get a little system because the quarterback is a very good athlete and uh, he made a couple of plays running the ball and, you know, once the Gators stopped that, they really did have nothing else to go to. Dropping back. Donnell Oakwind's pass was incomplete on the play. Well, Damon Smith, a linebacker. His name's getting up, said all over the TV, PA system, doing an outstanding job on the coverage. All right, the Gators now with two defensive backs. Looks like maybe uh, two safeties deep for maybe man or cover two. Screen play right there. Very good job by linebacker play. If it was man to man, then uh, one of those linebackers, I'm sure, had the running back and they were out there quickly to cover right there. So now you have your third and seventh situation. Leonard, uh, Thomas Leonard was on the tackle right there for that uh, short completion. Able to get outside, doing an outstanding job. You know, the one advantage that Helicox has at the quarterback spot, watch this right here. When you're on the left hash and you can run all the way across the field, basically if you can just get to the corner, you can turn up field and make enough yardage for a first down. So when you're in a spread offense, a lot of times you're gonna be on one of the two hashes. So here they are with three receivers to the left side. Well, that was a different look. They were kind of in that defensive third down situation with the two safeties. And now with the first down, they lined up like that. And basically whether it was man to man or cover two, they had that covered. Joe Lee Hartman will be with the homecoming court at the end of the first quarter, which will be in a minute and 34 seconds. Cornell Oakland's pass was incomplete, intended for Edward Kraft on the right side. Bring up third and 10 for the Cougars. We got a third and ten situation. Quarterback, well, the defensive line that might be one of the best schemes that I've seen, they stayed in their lanes, they rushed the quarterback, they did not give him an outside or an inside escape route, and did an outstanding job. He threw the ball away, creating a fourth and ten situation. Well, for, well there they are, they go in motion to reset at the slot positions. High snap. Another short punt. Ball bounces straight up in the air and you get a 20 yard punt. 31 yard line. 
You know, the advantage that you have on this turf field, folks, if you can get, get a punt to where they do not try to catch it and you don't kick the ball straight up in the air, you can get some nice roll. I remember uh, Cole Poirier last year had a punt of 60 to 70 yards in the air, and it rolled forever. All right, here we go with the Gators. First and 10, 32-yard line. Yeah, we got uh, offsides. Be a five-yard penalty against the Cougars. Offsides is the call against the Cougars. So Chase Kelly, nice pitch and catch by the Gators there. Kelly, this is that was his second touchdown pass. Well, it wasn't a touchdown pass, but nice, nice job on the little smash route. Going here, here, here's another one right down the middle of the field. Cole Sims, not real certain who had him. Maybe they were in a little zone scheme, but Cole Sims eases right by the defender, just barely overthrown. Oh, second and five. It's Chase Kelly again. Maybe picked up a half of a yard right there. Gary Ray. Gary Ray the with play. the tackle. The free safety. You know, Bring up third and four Chase got to figure out. I'm not real certain. I'm not trying to coach him up. Just get up the field, get what you can. and create a situation where you can hand it uh, to your running backs and get that offensive line getting a little movement right here. Flag on the plate. Got a flag here. Offsides by the defense and that's gonna create a first down situation. And if you're Helen Cox, Emmanuel Powell, the coach, cannot be happy with that because the first time Santa Maul's basically, or maybe the second time Santa Maul's in a long yardage situation, third and five or six, and uh, get the first down with a penalty. 27 seconds left in the first quarter. Yeah, there you go, Chase. There you go, Chase. Nice job right there. I think uh, there was a little uh, snafu there on uh, between the snap and the play. And uh, Chase was able to uh, get that ball and, 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 and turn up field and get a couple of yards. All right, that's the end of the first quarter. Now we have it to down on the sidelines with the homecoming queens with Jolie Hartman. It's a special night here at the pit tonight, and I am joined by the 2022 homecoming court, and the court includes Lexi Amade, Ava Andrew Moore, Rebecca Angel, Kendall Babbitt, Grace Bateman, Anna Coffey, Chloe DePlessis, Reagan Ford, Gracie Frederick, Aubrey Humphreys, Maggie Ladner, Clara Norris, Lainey Paul, Jamari Smith, Drew Webb, Marley Williams. And they are the senior class that was voted by their peers. And in just a moment, one of these beautiful ladies will be crowned homecoming queen. Back up to you, Coach Slack. Call All right, changing sides here. The Gators second and seven. 
Outside sweep, Kraft on the outside, getting tackled up. Linda Walters, outstanding job getting tackled, ankle tackle on Kraft. Yeah, we have a third and six. See, this, this is what the Gators have done an outstanding job with. Now, now we're going to get in there with a little motion. Oh, nice pick off by Helen Cox. Just got a tackling. Well, Chase, I know Chase saying, I wish I had that one back. Easton Jaro on the tackle from Gators. Cooper's will have first and goal near the two-yard line. Well, it's 6 nothing Gators, and Helly Cox on the two-yard line, second and goal. Yeah, they got a heavy package in there, just like a power eye. And we have a flag on the play by the, and it's, uh, oh, it's going to be a five-yard penalty against Helen Cox for illegal procedure. Well, that, that doesn't help situations for Helen Cox. You, you get a big play. I missed the number on the guy that tackled him. Tonight's the second quarter is being sponsored. Gyro, by it, Gyro tackled him. Probably the most important play of this game so far. And then you get the uh, five yard penalty. You know, Gyro did, you know, he just fought him, fought him, fought him, and probably brought him down. At the two yard line, and Warren Easter calls timeout. Well, here we are in the second quarter. All right, let's look at last week's. Non-district scores. Last week's non-district scores. And you know, we're gonna start out with Dutchtown had an open date. Uh, Alexandria 40. East Ascension 28, our Rev Game of the Week, Opelousas 28, Santa Mar 21, Denham 28, Franklinton 20, Live Oak 43, St. Alita 8, and Kentwood 20 to 19 over Walker. Here we go. First and goal from the nine yard line. Gets down to the seven. Shane Landry with a tackle from his safety Shane position. Landry in on the play for the Gators. Well, the Gators with a big play. Let's just see if the possibility you got the wide side of the left. And there's the quarterback. Well, now Touchdown. Touchdown, Helen Cox. Gil Chapman for the touchdown. Chapman with the catch, Gil Chapman. Nice job there by the quarterback, Warren Myers, or Mays. And he extended the play with that little sprint out. Thought he was going to be able to throw short. 
Thought he was going to be able to run, and then his third option was on the back of the end zone, a nice little throw on the run for a touchdown. All right, you got uh, Daniel Brickley. Going to try the extra point. And those hands go up. And Helen Cox goes ahead 7-6 to six with the touchdown pass by Warren Mays. We'll be back in a minute after a word from one of our sponsors. Probably heard that Etel has become Rev. What you may not know is that we're revving up your internet to symmetrical speed for free. Symmetrical speed means that your download and upload speeds are the same, thanks to the Rev All Fiber Network. The new speeds have been applied to your current internet plan and there's nothing for you to do, except enjoy shopping, gaming, streaming, learning, and laughing. Learn more at Let'sRev.com. Thanks for being a loyal customer and enjoy symmetrical speeds from Rev. New name, same company. Here we are back. I'm David Swacker, back with the homecoming game in the pit. Santa Maul's outstanding record, 45 homecoming games, 37 and 7, and seven in a row. A little bit in jeopardy right now. Here we are early in the second quarter. Ellie Cox with a 7 to 6 lead, kicking off. To the Gators, a little short kick. Going to be returned right up the middle. And uh, Maurice gets about five yards, ends up being a first to ten from the 35-yard line. Now here are the Gators. Oh, nice play right there by Helen Cox. Joshua Maurice trying the left side. Number 73. Eliza Smith on the play for the Eliza Blue. Smith. Boy, nice play right there. Maybe that was a read for uh, Chase Kelly. Let's see what uh, Coach Babin's got lined up here. We have a second and 13. Chase Kelly on the keeper up the middle for the Gators. Chase Kelly, that's exactly what he needs to do when he keeps the ball, get what he can, and basically needs to get down. Not a big kid, but a very smart kid and a tough kid. And on the play for the Cougars. All right, uh, you got Jeremiah Hall and Clark on the tackle. Now you have a third and seven situation. The empty formation. Pitch and catch, get up the field. Easton Gyro on the reception for the Gators. Gyro, a nice catch. No, notice this on the out route. Gyro didn't go four or five. You know, he got the first down. He wasn't able to turn up and get much, but did an outstanding job on the route. First of all, catching the ball, and second of all, getting that first down. There's Kraft again in the game. There's Maurice coming in, number seven. Up the middle for the Gators. Lindell Waters and Daniel Brickley on the play for the Cougars. Bring up second and eight for the Gators. After this play, we'll look at the district 5-5A records. Nice little swing pass. Chase Kelly's pass is complete on the right side. The Eastern Gyro. Got the 5-5A five, five records uh, going into this week. Denham Springs is 4-0. Walker's 4-1. Live Oak is 3-2. Santa Maul is 2-2. Two two. Dutchtown is 1-2, and, and they have a Thursday night game this week. And East Ascension is 1-3.
Third and eight situation for Kelly. Well, incomplete, intended for Cole Sims. Sims. Alligators are going to punt. Gyro is your punter. He's averaging about 33 yards a kick. Has had one long one of 45 yards. Well, the Gators are looking to the sidelines, maybe missing a player. It's always nice when that player comes in. Everybody knows who is kind of missing the spot, but the Gators in panic. One hop back there, Gyro picks it up. So from the 50-yard line to the 20-yard line, that's a 30-yard punt. Good job there by Gyro. Picking up a snap that just kind of rolled to him, but he got it on a big hop and didn't panic. He got the ball off. Helly Cox dropping back to throw, crossing pattern, in and out of the hands of the receiver. Nice throw right there. Uh, Damon Smith with the defending on the crossing pattern. Right there with the receiver. Receiver of uh, ball was right in the hands. Mays got it right there, but just could not hold on. Fake and go by the quarterback and gets whatever he can and gets out of bounds for a first down. There's a sweep, handoff right there. Nice job on the outside. Shane Landry on his strong safety position right there. Forced uh, the, the ball carry inside and made the solo tackle. And on the play Got a second and nine situation, ball in the middle of the field. Well, you got a hydration uh, timeout coming up, and we'll go back, back down to Joe Lee, get another look at that outstanding homecoming court for the Santa Mo Gators. Swing pass outside. Cornell Oakland's pass is continuing on the right side to Antonio. Malik Paul with the tackle. Outstanding job of the cornerback. A couple of times, Mays has gotten outside of containment. Very good job, and I think that would have been number four, Paul, and forced the uh, quarterback in, and the Gators doing an outstanding job with pursuit to that ball. All right, here we go with the hydration timeout. We're going back down to Joe Lee with the homecoming court. There they are, oh, right here. Okay, you got Ladner and Webb and Frederick and Babin and Smith. And Norris and Rebecca Angel. Will Fox and the Plessis, 
Anderman Moran and uh, Lanny Paul. And Aubrey Humphreys got Forrest, Williams, Coffee, Bateman, and Omni. We'll find out at halftime. Joe Lee will be with them at halftime. My mistake there. And Ascension Sheriff Bobby Weber. Once again, thank you to all our sponsors. Now here we are. Third and two situation. Quarterback being chased. Is he going to? Trying the left side for the Cougars. I tell you what. Mays does an outstanding job. Number one. He's no different than any other quarterback. He doesn't like to get hit. And he tries to outrun you on the outside right there, and he's successful sometimes. And the Gators are running left to right all night long, doing a great job between the tackles, and uh, could not get to the outside, so he just kind of threw it up in the air, which the ball was out of bounds on the pass. Here we are in the punt situation. That would punt down, down at the 35-yard line. All right, here we go. We have uh, 5.43 left. Let me see if the Gators are bringing in a little tight end or wingback situation on offense. Chase Kelly's Chase Kelly right there. Then the flag comes in. Chase Kelly, nice little pitch uh, catch on the curl and, and flat. I believe somewhere uh, it's fixing to happen. I believe Chase Kelly's fixing to throw the ball down the field. The de defensive backs are a little bit tight on those receivers. Maybe a little double move, a little hitch and go, out and up. Get you some maximum protection. Now here he comes outside. Jeremiah Clark, I think that was Kraft. And Lindell Waters in on the play for the Cougars. A lot of running in this game, a lot of rushing, and so that clock is always moving. Not a lot of out-of-bounds plays. There you go, Kraft, a nice job with the move. Getting closer to that first down marker. Tyron Kraft up the middle for the Gators. Maybe a little bit quicker Kraft is than uh, Maurice, but de definitely uh, not uh, the strength guy that Maurice is, but you know, he can handle himself well. A lot of vision in his moves, doing an outstanding job. Iron Kraft up the middle for the Gators. Well, let's see where we have the uh, the line judge here. Then you have the head line judge on the other side. And if they put that ball on that white line, I believe they're going to say it's a first down. And they are. First down, Gators. Iron Kraft trying the middle for the Gators. Vincent Riggins in on the play. Well, at halftime, 
Bryson Moore. Bryson Moore with the uh, tackle on Crab. Joe Levy with uh, Coach Oliver at halftime with a short interview. Then you'll have your homecoming activities. Chase Kelly on the keeper for the Gators. Well, not a good read there by Crab, but he did the right thing after the the uh, the read. He saw that he wasn't going to be able to go outside, so he turned up, not making it. Third and nine for the Gators. A uh, greater loss. So you have a third and nine situation. We have a timeout with two fifty one. In the second half, like second quarter. The generous sponsors for Santa Hall High School Athletic Program. Hannah's Lawn Service. So we have 12, 15 girls on that homecoming court. Raising Canes, Ralph's Supermarket, Tiger Honda, Saks Western Store, and Cole Myers Equipment Repair, Southern Custom Builders, Southern Maintenance, the venue rental halls, Santa Hall Muffler. Yeah, let me Southern give you these Olympic scores here from middle school Olympic action Olympic yesterday. Temperature control. Lake. Santa Hall pit stop. 14. Gonzalez, zero. Dutchtown, 28. Central, zero. Santa Hall, 26. Bluff, 16. Galvez, 34. Lori, 14. And Prairieville had a bye. Still, you have a couple of weeks left in the season. And everybody plays a round robin. They, they, everybody plays everybody one time. And uh, I think it's an opportunity for three or four teams to be in the possible championship run here. Craft outside. Breaks a tackle. Nice job there by Craft. Boy, did an excellent job, and, and, and who's coming in? Here comes uh, number seven, Daniel Brinkley. Uh, Brickley uh, makes the tackle there for Helen Cox. Fourth and two situation, and they bring it in the big boys. So I'm going to put my money on. I, I just think uh, Maurice has got to be your ball carrier, number seven. Oh, Sims on the keeper up the middle for the Gators. Little flag on the play. Yeah, we have a flag. Have a motion penalty, I would assume. I see the white hat way back here. And maybe he was just talking to the coach to see. What he wanted to do. So you have a fourth and seventh situation. You have three receivers to the wide side of the field. One inside one to the sideline. Down the side there, Chase Kelly with a touchdown. Luke Rafferty. Outstanding job. Nice throw by there, Chase Kelly. And Luke, watch him bring this ball in right there. Kind of your back shoulder throw right there. Right on the goal line for a touchdown. Incomplete. Oh, well, my fault right there. I looked at that student section, I was, and everybody was cheering. Well, first play getting the ball back. Santa Maul intercepts it. 
I do know that for certain. Shane Landry with the interception, number five. Well, we looked at the replay, and you could see the ball was caught, but the referee is pointing to that white out of bounds there at the two-yard line. Still got plenty of time. The Gators have one timeout, or maybe that's two timeouts left. Both teams have two. Joshua Maurice up the middle for the Gators. Joshua Maurice right there. Always moving those legs and keeping that head up. Watch this. Watch the run where he's changing directions. Change there. Change back in this direction. Then he gets up the field. Logan McNabb right there doing an outstanding job. First of all, Chase bought him some time. Look at the replay right here. Keeping his head down the field the entire time. Getting the ball to Logan. Tall kid. Jump up, caught that, and got out of bounds. 57 seconds left. Joshua Maurice. Joshua Maurice for... Four-yard gain. Gators may be in a little hurry-up mode right here. Still two timeouts left. Plenty of time. Joshua Maurice up the middle for the Gators. Now we got a timeout. Coach Oliver calls timeout. Timeout. Gators. Well, we have a heck of a ball game here. Seven to six. How important is that kicking game? And the Cougars able to knock one through the uprights. The Gators going for the swinging gate. Might have had a play on the outside, and quarterback could not get outside to get in the end zone and had a throw there. Uh, that was incomplete. So you have a third and four situation. Still one timeout left. Chase Kelly's pass is complete. Kyron good the good side. play there by Kentrell Jones on Kraft. Yeah, the Gators. Gators. Are they going to go for three here? So basically, this would be a 35-yard field goal, maybe a 36-yard field goal. 37-yard field goal, and it will be on the left hash, maybe not your favorite hash for right-footed kickers. Uh, Cardo uh, is your kicker. For extra points, and here he is lined up. Well, this would be number 13 kicking, Braxton, Braxton Trabo. And Trabo has kicked six out of seven extra points this year. Timeout, Cougars. Well, this, this is one thing that, because you don't see a lot of field goals in high school football, you know, you got to remind your kids on block, you know, here you are on the left hash, and if the kick gets blocked, it's probably going to go towards the middle of the field, and you got to cover that thing if that happens. And if it's kicked into the end zone, you can't return it, but if it's short of the end zone, you, you can return it. 
And, of course, the ideal thing right here would be to kick that between those two uprights. Cooper Cheekwood is not... 20 seconds left. 7 to 6. Helen Cox. No, a little bit pulled to the left, but plenty of distance right there by Trabo. So had some opportunities right there. Did not miss by much. But I would say, you know, just looking at that kick right there, that that thing could probably be from 45 yards easy with enough leg by Trabo. Well, let's see what Helen Cox is going to do. Gators line up with two deep, and the quarterback takes a knee. All right, here's Joe Lee with Coach the Oliver. Of homecoming. What are you expecting your Gators come out in the second half looking like? Well, we better come out with make a few mistakes and uh, find a way to win this game. All right, thank you, Coach O. Back up to you, Yub. Chris Specialty Foods has been making Cajun meat products for almost 30 years. We do all the prep work so people can have home cooked meals without spending all day in the kitchen. Everything is done ourselves. With three locations in Louisiana and a fourth in Texas, we needed all of them connected to the same system for point of sale and telephone. Rev Business set us up and it's been a game changer. They have everything as national companies but with real local service. Rev Business is authentic Louisiana, just like Chris's. Dr. Brian Hollis is Ascension Parish's orthodontist. Dr. Hollis has an excellent reputation for bringing state-of-the-art technology and the highest standard of patient care to Ascension. He attended LSU, LSU Dental School, and he completed a residency to become a board-certified specialist in orthodontics. An avid supporter in our community, Dr. Hollis is married to Celeste Pyron Hollis, and they have four children. Dr. Hollis, Ascension Parish's orthodontist. Grow up smiling with Hollis Orthodontics. Hi, we are live with the PPTV Network, where one of the top athletes is about to make his important decision. We know his character, and nothing will hold him back. I'm glad to have my family and friends here for this choice. It's more than my career. It will affect the rest of my life. I choose peak performance physical therapy. The decision is in. Why choose peak? The reputation and their record of success is unmatched. When it matters most, another patient chooses peak performance physical therapy. She is also active in the Beta Club. 
Ava is a four-year member of the cheerleading squad with three of those years on the gold squad. Ava was previously a member of the student council. Outside of school, she enjoys hanging out with friends and family, shopping, and going to the beach. Ava plans to attend Southeastern and apply to LSU School of Dentistry to major in orthodontics. Ava would like to thank the student body for giving her the honor to be part of this amazing experience. She'd like to wish the Gators good luck in their game tonight. Go Gators! Our next homecoming maid is Rebecca Angel. Rebecca is being escorted this evening by her parents, Jacob and Rafaela Angel. Rebecca is an honor student and a member of the cheer program, tennis team, cross country team, Gator to Gator, and Allied Health. Outside of school, Rebecca enjoys spending time with friends and family. After graduation, she plans to attend college to become a physician's assistant. She'd like to thank Gator Nation for giving her this opportunity. Go Gators! Our next homecoming maid is Kendall Babin. Kendall is being escorted this evening by her parents, Nathan and Joey Babin. Kendall is an honor student and currently a member of volleyball, Beta, the Huddle Stab, and Gator to Gator. Outside of school, Kendall enjoys sleeping and hanging out with friends. After graduation, Kendall plans to attend ULL. She'd like to thank the student body for being a part of this amazing experience. Go Gators! Our next homecoming maid is Grace Bateman. Right, Grace is being escorted this evening by her parents, Holly and Brent Bateman. She has cheered on the gold, white, and black squad throughout all four years. She's a member of the 2022 World Champion Black Squad and would like to wish the Black Squad best of luck at Nationals this February. Grace is a two-year member of Yearbook and is currently section manager. She is an honor student, a four-year member of Gator Rally, and a one-year member of Rho Kappa. Grace also competed on the gymnastics teams for her first two years of high school. Outside of school, Grace enjoys hanging out with loved ones and making people laugh. Grace plans to attend LSU and major in interior design. She'd like to thank the student body as well as her supportive family and friends for giving her this amazing experience. She'd like to thank the administrators and teachers for their encouragement throughout her high school years. Go Gators! Our next homecoming maid is Anna Coffey. Anna is being escorted this evening by her parents, Matt and Jessica Coffey. Anna is an academic honor student and a current member of the Gatorettes, Beta, Gator to Gator, Ro Kappa, and Allied Health. She's a four-year member of Gatorettes and two years of track and field. Outside of school, Anna enjoys spending time with friends and family, reading, and dancing. She plans to attend LSU and study law and psychology. She'd like to thank the student body for giving her the opportunity of this special experience. I'd like to wish the football team a successful and safe season, along with the Gatorettes. Go Gators! Our next homecoming maid is Chloe DePlessis. Chloe is being escorted by her parents, Chad and Lindsay DePlessis. Chloe is an honor student and currently a member of Beta, Gator to Gator, Gator Rally, and GNN. She is serving as communications manager for Ro Kappa. She was a two-year member of the Lady Gator volleyball team and has been a four-year member of Gator Cheer. She's a two-year member of Gold Squad and now a proud member of the Black Squad her senior year. She's a four-year member of the gymnastics team where she placed third at state in the all-around competition her sophomore year. Outside of school, she enjoys coaching gymnastics at Athletes in Motion, attending her brother's baseball games, and spending time with family and friends. After graduation, Chloe plans to attend Southeastern to pursue her career as a NICU nurse. Chloe would like to thank the Gator Nation for giving her this opportunity and wants to wish them a long and healthy season. Our next maid is Miss Reagan Forrest. Reagan is being escorted tonight by her mother, Delacia Wicker, her father, Ramsey Forrest, and her stepdad, Dennis Wicker. Reagan is an honor student and currently a member of the cross country team, Beta, and the Next Gen Club. She was also a two-year member of the Thespian Society. Outside of school, Reagan enjoys sewing, modeling, and doing her makeup. After graduation, she plans to attend Dillard University to major in nursing. 
Reagan would like to thank the Cedar Body for giving her this amazing opportunity with these beautiful ladies. Go Gators! Our next homecoming maid is Gracie Frederick. Gracie's being escorted this evening by her parents, Randy and Ashley Frederick. She's an honor student and currently a member of the Gatorettes. Yearbook, Gator to Gator. Gator Rally, Allied Health, and Row Capital. She's an active member of Interact and FCA her freshman year and was a member of Student Council and Beta her sophomore year. She's a four-year member of Gatorettes where she currently serves as captain. Outside of school, Gracie enjoys spending time with family, hanging out with friends, and taking vacations. After graduation, Gracie plans to attend LSU to major in mass communication. She would like to thank the student body for this memorable experience, and would like to wish the Gators good luck for the rest of their season, as well as the Gatorettes. Go Gators! Our next homecoming maid is Miss Aubrey Humphreys. Paige and Jason Humphreys. Aubrey is an honor student and currently a member of Beta, Gator Rally, and Student Council. She's a two-year yearbook staff member where she serves as section manager. She's a two-year member of Thespian Society. She's a four-year member of the SBA Cheer Squad, served as lieutenant captain her sophomore year and captain her junior and senior years. She's a four-year member of the Lady Gator soccer team, where she won the leadership award her sophomore year. Outside of school, Aubrey enjoys reading and spending time with friends. After graduation, Aubrey plans to attend LSU and major in English. She would like to thank the entirety of the student body for giving her this marvelous opportunity. Go Gators! Our next homecoming maid is Maggie Ladner. Maggie serves as captain of the Lady Gator varsity volleyball team, where she recently received academic All-State honors. She's a member of Beta, FCA, Gator Rally, and the Pit Crew. Maggie enjoys attending concerts and sporting events, traveling, and hanging out with friends and family. After graduation, she plans to attend ULL to major in nursing. She'd like to thank the student body of Gator Nation for giving her this amazing opportunity. It's been such an honor and so much fun. Sweet memories made with these beautiful girls. Thank you. Go Gators! Our next homecoming name is Clara Norris. Clara is being escorted this evening by the best parents in the world, Jan and Don Norris. She's a four-year varsity powerlifter, honor student, and band member. She's involved in Thespian Society, Gator to Gator, Drumline, GNN, Row Kappa, Gator Alley, and is the Environmental Science Club president. Claire is a six year talented theater gifted student. This year she's looking forward to being the head choreographer for Mama Mia. Outside of school, she enjoys camping, hiking, and traveling. After graduation, Clara has no idea where she wants to go to school, but plans to study abroad to receive her teaching certificate while achieving her dreams of traveling the world. She'd like to give a huge thank you to teachers, staff, and students of Santa Hall, as well as her parents who have always told her that she can achieve anything as long as the glory goes to God. And obviously her best friends and girlfriend for believing in her. She loves y'all. Go Gators! Our next homecoming maid is Lane Paul. Lane is being escorted this evening by her father, Alonzo, and her mother, Lenard. Lane is the secretary of P Club, a member of Cross Country, and is also part of Starting the Change Committee. She also did track and field for two years and is active in beta. Outside of school, Lane enjoys shopping, spending time with friends and family, and making videos through her social media platforms. After graduation, Laney plans to attend Southern University to major in nursing. Laney would like to thank the student body for giving her the opportunity to be a part of this great experience. And she'd like to wish the Gators good luck tonight and for the rest of their season. Our next homecoming maid is Jamari Smith. Jamari is being escorted this evening by her parents, Markwell and Whitney Scott. Jamari is a two-year member of the track team and currently a member of the Key Club. Outside of school, Jamari loves to do hair and make graphic flyers and logos. After graduating, Jamari plans to attend Southern University and major in nursing.
you'd like to thank everyone for giving you this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be a part of something so great. Go Gators! Our next homecoming maid is Drew Webb. Drew is being escorted this evening by her parents, Andy and Michelle Webb. She's an honor student and currently a member of the cheer program, the track team, Thespian Society, and Row Catholic. Drew has participated in the white and gold cheer squad and has been part of track team for four years, throwing varsity javelin and discus. Drew also actively participates in the theater program and was in last year's production of High School Musical. Outside of school, Drew enjoys working and spending time with friends and family. After graduation, she plans to attend School for Political Psychology. She'd like to thank the Gator Nation for giving her this opportunity. Go Gators! Our final maid this evening is Miss Marley Williams. Marley's being escorted this evening by her parents, Dustin and Andrea Williams. She's a four-year honor student. Marley is a member of the Gator Advance team for all four years and has held an officer her junior and senior years. She's participated in Interact and Beta. Outside of school, she's been dancing at Infinity Dance Center for 16 years. She enjoys fishing, working out, and spending time with friends and family. After graduation, she plans to attend Southeastern to major in psychologist, psychology to become a child life specialist. Marley would like to thank the students and faculty for all of their support. She will cherish these memories for a lifetime. Go Gators! Last night at the pep rally, we crowned the homecoming 2022 homecoming king, Kyler Guillory. And please welcome to the front sideline, Principal Beth Tomplay to aid us, and last year's queen, Jenna Spillman. And the homecoming queen is Miss Clara Norris. Well, Jolie, kind of almost ends a long week for everybody and a fun week. Still got a half of this football game left. So tell me a little bit about, uh, do you know the homecoming queen? Yes, I do. Uh, I got the privilege of uh, being her sponsor for Gator Rally. That's our spirit group at Santa Mall High. Clara has been a uh, part of Gator Rally all four years, has been a tremendous help. Um, with just providing a positive, fun atmosphere at Santa High. Great. And so uh, who, who selects the homecoming queen? So uh, first off, at the beginning of the week, um, the whole school, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors, votes um, for the court. And then um, this past week, juniors and seniors voted for um, our homecoming queen, which is Miss Clara Norris. And last question before we go into some pictures. What goes through your mind in 2008 when you hear that magic that says homecoming queen Jolie Hartman? <laughs> well, a um, little different back in 2008. Um, I was actually crowned on the pit um, at the pep rally, not at the homecoming game. So um, very different atmosphere, uh, just mainly the community and people that wanted to be at the pep rally was there. And then uh, came to the pit Friday night for the game, already had my crown in hand and got recrowned by principal at the time, Steve Westbrook again. So uh, it's an unbelievable feeling to know that your peers voted for you as somebody that represents There's them. There's no behind. doubt. And we're talking about hundreds of them, <laughs> thousands of them. Thousands, yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about what happened this week with homecoming. So this week, um, I'm very proud of the Cinema High student body. I mean, they went above and beyond with just the, the theme of it was Hollywood. And um, on Monday 
as you see these pictures right here, it was Disney Day. So at the bottom of our screen, that is our guidance counselors. They were the Incredibles because, honestly, they are incredible at what they do. And, um, you know, we have some students and teachers at the top. Um, they dress down in Disney attire. Um, as we, I guess you would say, explore, you know, how streaming is now, Disney Plus, they really went all out for uh, everything from Marvel to Pixar to everything else. So it was quite amazing to see Monday happen. Yeah, counselors, five counselors, six counselors. Yep. 2,200 so, students. Yep, and one registrar. <laughs> So well, let's look at some of the other pictures here. So Tuesday was quite comical for us. That was called Adam Sandler Day, Coach. So we dressed up as either Adam Sandler himself or a movie that he has played in. So you're going to see Scuba Steve at the bottom, which actually that is the nickname for our uh, <laughs> OS officer. Um, so they dressed as him. And then when you got Happy Gilmore, you have... Um, Big Daddy, you know, went all the way from kids dressing as Adam Sandler, today dressing like a basketball player, you know, just everyday life. So it was a great day to uh, see these kids dress up. Let's see what else we have here. Here we go. Oh, Wednesday. This was um, by far the funnest day for the kids. It was called Celebrity Day. So you see them dressed as what they see a celebrity at the bottom. I love it. There's uh, students dressed as their favorite teacher, as a celebrity. <laughs> and then, Coach, you got right in the middle of your screen at the top, you had two softball players dress up as Coach Amy Petrie. <laughs> Um, you know, Which one's Amy in there, huh? <laughs> exactly. You can't even tell from that. I mean, look at the state champions uh, dressed up as their coach. Quite awesome. Wow. Anything, any other pictures we have here? There we go. Oh, look, Coach, you would have loved this day. This was called uh, a Louisiana Production Day. Anything that was filmed in Louisiana or anything that has to do with Louisiana, we got Uncle Cy there. Um, did you know that uh, part of Jurassic world was filmed in new orleans so oh, really? we had dinosaurs around us we got tony sassery um we even got just a fishing coach fishing <laughs> tournament happening all all the way at the uh, left side wow i tell you what it's amazing the personality that kids have oh absolutely. don't think for a second they can't think absolutely they're always trying to figure out something Yes, and I, I get excited as a teacher just because uh, we hear it all the time. They don't like wearing uniform. They don't like wearing IDs. And even though you have to wear IDs during homecoming week, this really shows, you know, how the kids are. And I always try to tell them, like, this is what you're going to remember back in high school. No Being doubt. able to do this all week and having fun um, with it, but also being, you know, um, still going with guidelines with the school and, um, you know, showing And it's not just kids. It's teachers also oh, absolutely, highly involved. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I know a lot of us got together. We were on um, on Monday, the Sanderson uh, sisters, because Hocus Pocus 2 comes out tonight. You know, uh, me and some of the friends, you know, we were the squad of Hocus Pocus. So, you know, it's just those little things like that. And, and that helps actually the kids dress up too, because they see the teachers get into it and things like that so that always uh brings a positive uh environment so that's homecoming and big big tradition at every high school now all of a sudden this is what you have here the EA week, and it's not week 10, it's week 6. Man, Coach. And, and, and don't let anybody complain and gripe about it. It, it is what it is. It uh, is. It's been there before. Uh, and so can, a kid can basically say, I'm not going to say they got two weeks off, but they have two weeks to have a little bit of fun with their education. So what's going to happen this week uh, with East Ascension Week? So uh, this year will be the first year that we are um, doing to wear. Um, they're, they're not dressed in orange all week. It's just going to be because of having homecoming this week. We kind of need to go back to a little bit of normalcy. Uh -huh. You know, on Monday and Tuesday, let's get back into uniform and things like that. But then on Wednesday, when it starts um, true EA week, because we'll have, um, well, actually, EA will be hosting our varsity, our, excuse me, freshman and JV on Wednesday. So we're going to start wearing orange on Wednesday and then hit it up Thursday and Friday with orange. Um, but we're looking forward to another great EA week, you know, like you said, it's normally in week 10, but got pushed up. But that doesn't matter. We're, we're going to be ready, you know, as a community and a school. And, um, you know, without um, 
without having the shout out this year, you know, both schools have decided that we're going to host pep rallies at each site. Um, EA will be hosting theirs at Spartan Stadium. We're going to be hosting a big pep rally here uh, next Thursday for the community to come out, support the Gators, and have a lot of fun and get ready to host the Spartans next Friday here at the pit. And let's uh, continue on with this, and maybe we'll get into the little uh, kicking game uh, here to start the uh, second uh, half. So we're, we're starting again. Let's uh, let's go over this one more time. Wednesday, what do we have? We have at East Ascension. It's the uh, doubleheader, freshman and JV. All right, um, and they've already played one time, or maybe more than once. Yes, uh, they have. Yeah, and then uh, Thursday. Thursday, both schools will be hosting their own pep rally at their football stadium. Um, pretty sure East Ascensions is called the pregame. And then um, Santa Mall High's uh, pep rally is going to be called the Gator Tailgate. Um, uh, Santa Mall's is here right at the pit. It's going to start at 530 with the juniors versus senior powder puff game. And then go straight into a pep rally, uh, community involvement, uh, bring your lawn chairs, come sit out on the pit, watch uh, some performances by the Gatorettes, Cheer, and Color Guard. And uh, so uh, when you say juniors and seniors, that means you're, you're really hoping – that the freshmen and sophomores come on out too, and uh, exactly, kind of, um, kind of give them something to look forward to. Yes, coach. and you know, uh, I mean, because you know, it's a stepping stone in high school, you know, and, and it should just be uh, more interesting and more fun as the uh, years go on. Well, let's see. You're you're also uh, the 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 in charge of uh, the pregame activities a little bit with the. Uh, Blowing up the uh, gator head? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I will be completely honest with you. I'm learning that word no very easily on year six as a teacher. But I absolutely love doing this for Santa Mall High. And just are, are you aware that they have a machine that does that? You didn't have to yeah, actually. Yeah, well, you kind of have know, to Probably get halfway it through here. you got a little tired, I think. Uh, <laughs> yes. Now, let's see what happens here in this kickoff. Uh, uh, at the end of the third quarter, I need you to interview – the queen? Yes, sir. And I, I think I heard she's a power lifter. Yes, she is. Oh, outstanding. You might want to get, you know, they usually like to brag about their numbers. Uh, you know, what's her, <laughs> their three lifts or something like this. Uh, they're usually very, very proud of the years uh, that we've hosted uh, the state championships here at Santa Mall before. So, so Santa Mall is going to start off with the ball. And uh, it, it looks to me like uh, basically Santa Mall should have, you know, s seven points. There's Josh right there. And, you know, he's done a super job doing that. The little pick six or close to a pick six was uh, uh, just a killer there uh, for uh, the Gators uh, along with the extra point uh, that was good. So, uh, and we start off right here. This is exactly what you want. You know, I, I'm not real certain what, what coach is thinking right here. But, you know, Josh Maurice right there, if he's strong enough, he just needs to keep hammering him. Just keep hammering him. Maybe every once in a while, you know, do what you did uh, 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 right before the end of the second quarter. Go for that long ball. Right up the middle, Chase Kelly. <laughs> well, Chase Kelly, little, uh, I like to call it fake and go. Uh, maybe he's reading somebody on there, which I'm certain he is. And uh, a little plus uh, two or three yards on the play. Getting a lot of nice gains in there. The offensive line's doing a really good job. But you do have a lot of people in this tackle box area right there. Yeah, you got four down linemen, another one coming up. Oh, pretty close. It's going to be very close to the first down. 
And it should be this official's left foot, I believe. And he gives him the first down. It's uh, because of uh, Josh was tackled here closer to this left hash. That official comes out and spots the ball. Two people pulling right there. Cut up on the inside. Kraft. Boy, that looked beautiful. If we watch the replay right, right here, watch the right guard. I think uh, if we watch the replay, uh, Vaughn and Trinity Williams. Boy, did an outstanding job and uh, picked up 10 easy yards on that play by uh, Kraft. Nice job right there. I mean, you know, basically what you're doing, Chase Kelly's keeping him honest. And, you know, he's not keeping him honest with long runs. He's keeping him honest with short keepers right there and uh, where it just gives them a thought of what they need. And there's Kraft right there, right off tackle for a first down. So this is what, you know, I'm seeing right here. You know, Coach Seth Babbin and Coach Oliver, they're sitting there going, we need, we can run the ball on them, and hopefully they're thinking that we got some consistent running going on in the first half, and we're just going to continue and see if we can wear them down a little bit. You know, some people will say halftime adjustments. Well, the adjustments, we're coming right at you still. Maurice outside, getting pulled down from uh, behind, but a pickup of five or six yards on the play. Well, maybe five. Boy, what a halftime show. Uh, Chase Kelly uh, could not get much on that. Seems like their better plays are the ones that where uh, you, you, you have the guards and the tackle pulling or maybe uh, the wing back or the stiffer back sometimes they call him. Nice job on the outside in the end zone. Cole Sims comes from his wing back position. Let's see if we can see that again. Comes from his wing back position. Watch, he's going to come right at you in the living room here. There you go, right there. Excellent call right there. Excellent execution by the Gators. You see this play not thousands of times, but the NFL and uh, the college ranks are running this till the cows come home. Now they go, they're going to run everybody over. And uh, here's going to be Trabo, six for seven on extra points. Nice snap. And off to the left. Well, you know, uh, basically, Trabo needs to understand it may come down to him kicking because he, he's got the leg to kick a fairly long field goal. So, you know, just, just hang in there uh, because this game is not over with yet. 12 to 7. You can always watch the. Uh, the Rev Game of the Week on Channel 4 or 704. 
And, uh, you know, it, it basically you, you have to live stream on Rev Sports uh, YouTube channel. And uh, you could pick up the games uh, also uh, live uh, Sundays, I mean, uh, replays on Sundays and Wednesdays. Check your TV guide local listing. Oh, nice job right there by Helen Cox going all the way down the field to the 26-yard line. And that was Gil Chapman. Now you got a flag. Where? And it's going to go against Helen Cox. All right, let's, uh, while we're waiting uh, for that to be uh, marked off, let's look at our District 5-5A games of the week this week. Week 5, September 29th and 30th. All right, uh, you see uh, uh, Carver at Dutchtown. Uh, De La Salle at East Ascension. That's on Rev TV. Helen Cox at Santa Mall. Dennis Springs. At St. Thomas More, John Kennedy at Live Oak. John Kennedy won that 37-27. Uh, that was a Thursday night game. And Walker beat Bel Air 42 to uh, nothing. So that, uh, you know, you have a situation in Livingston Parish where Denham Springs is rebuilding their entire stadium and turf field. And uh, so... They have had to play uh, just like uh, the Spartans and the Gators last year. A lot of games on uh, uh, Live Oaks Field, Walker's Field. And the word that I'm getting is that their stadium will be done like week eight or week nine. And, of course, that's what we ended up having last year at East Ascension and at Santa Mall. So it's going to be interesting to see just exactly what happens. Got De La Salle ahead of East Ascension, 14-3. De La Salle is a smaller school, but a very good school out of New Orleans. Third and one situation. Hey, you can see uh, Santa Maul's got everybody lined up at the line of scrimmage. And, uh, and they get a timeout. Coach Emmanuel Powell in his third year says, we need a timeout right here. You know, they go from the excitement of that kickoff return to where they're on the 26 or 27 yard line and it comes back to the 26 or 27 yard line uh, basically it, well take that back the uh, seven yard line so um, but they did manage to get the ball where it's a third and one situation 6 minutes uh Got a little uh, hydration timeout. Well, you have the slot receiver that is uncovered out there. That. Yeah, it looks like he picked up a first down watching uh, Shane Landry with the tackle. Shane's having a nice night. 
Shane Landry and Peyton Anderson on the play from here. Oh, first and 10, 18 yard line. A little crisscross in the backfield. Nice tackle there, 59. Big found, uh, and, uh, Fountain. Boy, right there in the backfield. And look, uh, on his stats, he has also an interception this year. Big man right there picking the ball off. Tackle in the backfield for a three yard loss. All right, in at quarterback, I think he was in there in the uh, second quarter also, is uh, number two, and that's uh, Dar uh, Darnell Quinn. And he's back to throw, getting outside. Nice little completion right there underneath. You know, that, that, that's the killer. When you have an athlete, it doesn't matter what level you're at, that can run and can keep a play alive and extend a play, a lot of positive things. And the, the thing about it, a lot of big plays can happen. We'll have Joe Lee with an interview. With... Our homecoming queen, Clara Norris. Quarterback on the keeper outside. Picking up a couple on the play. Well, we'll go over after this play. We'll go over our 5-5-A district games of the week next week. Nice there in the flat. Looked like uh, uh, Shane uh, Landry. Nice job of picking up uh, out of the backfield. Here's the games next week. Dutch Walker and Dutchtown will be on a Thursday. Now you say, why a Thursday? Well, I'm not real certain, but there is a shortage of officials, and I know for the last couple of years they've asked for people uh, for to take a Thursday game or two. Then Denham at Live Oak, that's on a Thursday. And then East Ascension at Santa Mall. So the Dutchtown game and the Santa Mall EA game are going to be on Rev TV. Dutchtown on Thursday and Santa Mall EA on Friday. Well, while, while we're uh, waiting on this, let's look at our the uh, Louisiana Sports Writers Association top ten for five A. The team that we saw uh, Destrehan a couple of weeks ago, we did that game, and then you look at that right there, and there's a lot of people with a loss or two, and then you see one and three car. That's because they had to uh, forfeit. Three games uh, because of an illegal player. Very good job right there on a stun on the outside. Dylan Carpenter with the tackle. But it looked like number two did a good job of forcing the quarterback inside. 
And that is uh, Lane Swanson. They could do it. Well, there's that roll that I was talking about. And uh, the Gators will have the ball ahead. 12 to 7. On the right hash on the 27 yard line. Uh, while we're at it right now, let's, let's, let's look at uh, the Gators. In the playoffs, the last five years. And uh, starting in 2017, they went to the regionals, second round. Then you buy district. Uh, there's a long run right there. Luke Rafferty, here it is right there. A little pit, pitch out to the outside. Nice little moves there by Raff, Terry. And uh, then the Gators uh, missed the playoffs in 2019. And uh, then the uh, 20 and 21 by district and regional round. Going to be a lot different this year in, in all the sports because you're gonna. it looks like uh, the LHSA has gotten it approved to where – you're going to have uh, two different divisions, and uh, in two different divisions, uh, basically uh, what's going to happen is if you are a school that has an open enrollment, and a lot of the New Orleans and Lafayette schools have this, you're going to go to the select division, and uh, basically what it works out to in football is uh, – Let's just say there's 400 football playing schools. Basically, you're going to have about 200 apiece that are going to be split up in four divisions. So you're going to have two different groups of four divisions. And uh, Division One will be, you know, that's not going to be called 5A. It's going to be called Division One, But that's basically going to be, it could be a combination of 5 and 4A. And... Um, so that's going to be kind of interesting how that works. I think they're going to do it also in uh, basketball. So um, that remains to be seen. And then when they have the general meeting in January, I think it will be revoted on again. Some people are not real happy with that. That trips right here to the sideline. Good job, right? Getting in there. Nice movement of the feet. And we have Josh Maurice does a nice job right there. Watch him right here in there. Watch him moving those feet and picking up three or four extra yards. Well, that was Kraft. Tough situation right there. Uh, Gyro got held up slightly. Maybe needed a little outside release right there. And uh, that, that being held up slightly caused that ball to be overthrown a little bit. Nice idea right there. That's second and ten. Get Kraft right there. Stay on your feet all the way into the end zone, Kraft. Nice run right there. How far? Uh, let's just see. 36 yards by Kyron Kraft. The Gators are showing a power running game with Maurice and Kraft. And Chase Kelly says, I'll be involved in that also a little bit. I've gotten me a few yards tonight. Yeah. 
Well, Gyro's going to come in and uh, try his hand at the extra points. Well, those referees raise that hand. Nice little smooth kick by Gyro through there. And the Gators go up 19 to 7. Boy, after not scoring a point last week, and uh, just looked like they just physically a better team tonight. Uh, let's look at Helen Cox, how, how they've stood in the playoffs the last five years. All right, here we go. In 17, they're by district, 18 regionals. And then the last three years, they have uh, missed the playoffs. I think the way it's uh, working now that everybody's going to be in the playoffs with the new uh, standard that they're going to have. And then, of course, they'll be ranked with the power rankings of who's going to play who, and I'm sure there's going to be buys uh, in some parts of the bracket. Bravo, a uh, line drive kick, picked up at the 12 by 14. And uh, that was Gil Chapman getting the ball out to the 31-yard line. Drop it back to throw. Going to run the ball. Still looking downfield. Gets out of bounds with a pickup of three on the play. And that will be uh, number uh, two, uh, O'Quinn and uh, Makai Paul with the running out of bounds over there of the quarterback. Sweep right here, outside. Able to get a few, a few more yards after uh, initial contact and uh, pick up a first down to the 42-yard line. Little motion across the field. Screen. Carpenter, number 99, bringing him down, making it a third and sixth situation. De La Salle's ahead of East Ascension in the fourth quarter, halfway through the fourth quarter, and 22-6. Uh, Let's 
So it's going to start Wednesday. Freshman and JV game. I think I have, I came to the freshman and JV game, and I think one of those games was a tie, and the other one was a, I think, a victory for Santa Mall. I think the JV game, uh, Santa Mall won. There was a tie between the freshmen. Then both schools are going to have a little. The chef's daily specials. All right, guys, I am here with the newly homecoming queen, Miss Clara Norris. Clara, when you heard your name, what was the first thought that came to mind? The first thing I thought was, uh, did they call the wrong name? And then, like, once it registered, I was just excited. And I'd been talking to my dad, telling him that I was kind of looking forward to being, like, on the court. And once I got on the court, I was just super stoked about it. And I've been, like, keeping them updated. On it, so the first person I wanted to hug was my dad, and it happened, and I'm, I'm so excited about it. It's a memory for sure. Congratulations, Kara, and from the behalf of the student body and a teacher at Santa Mall High, congratulations. Thank you so much. Back up to you, Coach Swag. All right, here we go with the start of the fourth quarter. A lot of motion here. Nice job. Motion in uh, number 13 across, uh, short. And uh, the Gators do an outstanding job of staying right there with him. Now we have a fourth down punting situation. Yeah, nice job, job on the catch. Tackled from behind. And the uh, referee uh, picks the, uh, throws the flag to the ground. And uh, five-yard penalty, uh, roughing the punter. You know, I, I would think that Coach Powell would say we are going to move that five yards and then we're going to go for it. Well, they get a first down. And now there is a timeout by the Cougars. Quick mall, assistant parish president. 
Barnett, the public state market, bourgeois physical therapy and sports rehab, small town diesel repair, and Trinity Construction. Once again, thank you to all our sponsors. Well, the one thing that you cannot do for the Gators is you, you can't ease up right here because they've done an outstanding job defensively and offensively. And uh, because, you know, you're dealing with some pretty good athletes right here. And as you can see, they're going with two safeties deep, try, try, trying to uh, – there's a little uh, reverse on the outside. Kai uh, Paul on the tackle. But d just watch when you go uh, to the outside. He does not let him get outside of him. And when he breaks back inside, you got help. Make it a third and four situation. Third and five. Quick little pass to the outside. Well, Paul right there, let him get outside instead of funneling him into the uh, linebackers and the other safeties. Able to swing outside and pick up the first down. Fake and go by the quarterback, number two. O'Quinn. Trabo with a... Knocking the quarterback out of bounds. And the quarterback with a sprint out. Uh, Chapman uh, ball fell to his, uh, fell before he got to him. Well, you have to think that O'Quinn's going to be involved in this play. And him outside, very good job of coming up. I just can't emphasize as much as they've gone outside with the quarterback sprint out or with uh, handoff sweeps or faking goes. You know, in general, the, the Gators have done an outstanding job of forcing that wide guy to come inside and getting help. And so, you, you know, you have a situation right there where the guy probably ran 15 or 20 yards, did not gain a yard on the play. Fourth and five. Uh, I'm going to look for the quarterback to keep it this time. Well, nice little uh, fake and try to hit Gilman or Chapman right over the middle and uh, just could not hang on to it. So think about this, folks. I mean, that ball, that kickoff return went down to the, about the 20-yard line and came back, and, and, you know, you haven't been able to make anything positive since that situation.
His penalty pass is complete on the left side to Easton Jarro. Jairo's going to look at the film and say, mm, should not have done that. Understand what he's trying to do. But, you know, the, the more he plays this game, he'll understand you got pursuit when you go to cut back. Maurice right there, picking up nine yards. Well, there's a bad misconception out there when you're in the spread offense that you are throwing the ball a lot. You got receivers spread all over the place. That means DB's got to be spread all over the place. And they are handing the ball to these two running backs, and they're doing an outstanding job. That offensive line is really doing an outstanding job. Got stuck right there a little bit. Yeah, you got a fourth and three situation. They got fourth down. Gyro with a kick. Nice job right there by Gyro. The ball rolled down the field a little bit and out of bounds. 35 yards on the kick by Gyro. Well, nice gain right there. By Duplashan uh, on the tackle. Now we got a penalty flag on the play. Next week, we got Walker at Dutchtown on Thursday night. That'll be on Rev TV. Denham Springs at Live Oak and East Ascension at Santa Mall on Rev TV. Marking off a, a penalty here that's, I don't know how it could be a 15-yarder because it should be half the distance to the goal. Well, 
I tell you what, that Gator uh, got Leonard Thomas on the tackle. Well, that that Gator down linemen and linebackers have been running all over the place chasing quarterbacks tonight. Now try a little screen pass. The Gators uh, bring. Some linebackers on that play. And O'Quinn right there, trying the left side right there, could not find anybody open, so kept the ball. Now we have a fourth and 15 situation. Jared Brown with the tackle. Yeah, next week uh, we have the East Ascension, Santa Maria, Walker, Dutchtown. And in two weeks, Live Oak at Dutchtown. That's going to be homecoming for Dutchtown and Walker at E-Day. As you could get that on live stream on your YouTube channel on Rev Sports. And you see the replays on Sundays and Wednesdays. Legal procedure, five yard penalty. Gators let it roll. It rolls down. The Helen Cox at the 48-yard line. Cooper Babin in at quarterback the last five and a half minutes. You missed that at the beginning. Uh, uh, the Sheets kid was a starting quarterback and then got hurt, and he's been out since the beginning of the season. Fumble on the plate. 
Jeremiah Hall with the uh, recovery there. Back to throw. Nice toss out and flat. Caught at the 13 yard line. Pick of seven. Good job by the Gators right there. Forcing that, that runner to gut, cut up inside. Pick up a one, uh, third and two. You got 351, 19 to 7 is the score. The Gators have been pretty much in control in this game. Uh, you know, you had a almost a pick six situation. And uh, tr then um, Gyro was able to run him down from behind. You know, so. Uh, you know, it's it's been the Gators' way. They just have not been able to get the big play in the game. And then all of a sudden, Kraft comes through and uh, scores on a 30 or 40-yard run. You know, the one thing that you got to be uh, aware of right here is that uh, Helen Cox is right here on the... 12 yard line and if they score in this possession right here they're one score away from winning this thing nice lick by Thomas Leonard well watch this I mean, they're doing – staying outside, keep outside, can't let him get around. And Leonard comes in and finishes him off. Now it's going to be first and goal. I watch the cut back right in here, 21. Uh, O'Quinn and Antoine. That clock's just running, and that's what you want it to do. Got third and goal situation. Gators stack him up. Nice job there by that defensive front. Well, you look at him right there. Big 25's in there. And Damon Smith. Well, look at that. Three or four of them right there. Get credit for that. Uh, Peyton Anderson's in there. And two or three others. Uh, 
That was one minute left. East Ascension is down to De La Salle, 20 to 13. One minute left in the ball game. So what would you do right here? Fourth and goal. You're going to hand off and run that speed sweep. You're going to put the quarterback uh, sprinting out. I'm not real certain how good they are in the passing game. Deflected it right there. Outstanding play by Peyton Anderson. I think the play was the the the, the play they called was outstanding. He he just he just did a good job knocking it down right there. Big 44 says, I may not intercept this, but I know one thing. You're not catching it, and it's going to be our ball, first and 10. It's a final score, East Ascension. Uh, lose it 20 to 14. 20 to 13. So... I think on the scoreboard, zero timeouts left. Santa Mall has two timeouts left. Need to hold on to the ball. Uh, the clock's running. 12, 10. Should be able to snap it uh, with uh, 130. There's Maurice down the middle. Nice little block in there. Let's see if we had there. I believe we had a little trap block, 25-yard gain. Watch that. There they go. Those two big boys pulling. Left guard and left tackle pulling and kicking out and leading up and doing a heck of a job in there. Well, now with no timeouts left, let that clock run down. Josh Maurice, he says, uh, I can make a big play right here, and he sure did. Nice blocking by the offensive line. It's going to be interesting to see how many yards rushing the Gators have tonight. Uh, 40 seconds. You basically, uh, you could get on a knee right now. We're going to hang in here for a little while with uh, post-game activities here. We got the handshake, and then uh, the big thing, that if you're a Gator or probably a lot of other teams throughout the nation that play in this game, we're going to have the uh, alma mater. Oh, the Gators. Kind of scratch your head in the beginning, but I'm going to just tell you, it was all about one thing. Those running backs for Santa Mall ran hard. The offensive line blocked hard. And defensively, 
they figured it out, and they just did not give them much. And uh, when they were lucky enough to get on the outside, they, they had some nice little gains. But I'm going to just tell you, it was a great team effort uh, offensively and defensively. Still need to get a little better in the kicking game. But I know they work on that each and every day at practice. Got Andre. Want to thank him, our director here in the press box. Lyle calling all the shots as a producer. Courtney and Jake handling the cameras for us. Uh, Garrett was up here as a spotter, did an outstanding job. All right, here we go down on the field right, Coach o, with so Jolie you got the and w Coach Oliver. For homecoming. What was your halftime speech uh, to your boys? Uh, nothing. We just had to start making some plays on offense. I don't think they'd have scored if we wouldn't have turned the ball over deep in their own end. So the offense came through in the second half. Well, congratulations, Coach O, because you are now tied for the winningest football coach at Sanimal High School. Congratulations, Thank you. Coach. Good luck next week. And back up to y'all tonight. Thank y'all and good night. Well, thank you, Joe Lee, with Coach Oliver. Strong tradition here at Santa Mar High School. Anybody and everybody who wants to get in there, come on in. The Gators with a big victory tonight. Week five, non-district. Week five, this game's in the history books, folks. Next week starts district for all the district competition, Livingston and Ascension Parish. We will have the Gators and the Spartans in the first district opener next week. Congratulations to the homecoming queen, Clara Norris, the king, Kyler Gilry, We'll see you next week on the Rev Game of the Week.